Hello everyone, welcome once again to Beauty for Ashes, hallelujah. God has been faithful, God has been good, God has been kind, he's just been awesome. Today is the last Saturday in the month of February and I'm telling you, it has been so many testimonies. To God be all the glory. I welcome you once again in the mighty name of Jesus. Rounding up this month of February, um, you know, we've been talking since the beginning of the month about the kind of people you need in your life and the kind of people you want to reject completely in your life if you are going to really have beauty for ashes. And it's been amazing, you know, the scriptures that the Lord has led us to see. And I thank God for the testimonies I've also received. Um, let me just quickly say this, that please make sure you subscribe to that YouTube channel, share it, like it, put your comments. Let me know what your comments are. You don't have to wait till you send me an email before you send a comment. Just put your comment there. I'll read that one right there immediately. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, I want us to just see another aspect of this thing we've been talking about. And um, we want to look at associates and friends. You know, there are some associates and friends that you need in your life. And there are some associates and friends that you will want to delete, you want to reject, you want to ask the Lord to send them away because you can't afford to have them in your life if you will move forward this year and if you have beauty for ashes. I have a very interesting example in the, book, in the Bible, in the book of First Samuel chapter 9. That is the story of Saul. You know, he had a business to do. And what was the business? To look for the lost asses of his father. The father said, please go and look for them because they are very important to me. And he said, as you are going, you need somebody to go with you. So take any of the servants to go with you. And he took one of the servants. Thank God he made the right choice. You see, your friends, your associates, your companions, your acquaintances are very important to the success of your life. So he took this guy and they went. They searched everywhere, from city to city, from place to place. They couldn't find these lost asses. And Saul was tired. But the servant was not tired. Sometimes you need people that will encourage you when you are tired. So Saul said, look, let's go back. We can't continue to search for these asses. We've gone too far and my father will even be, will forget about the, the asses and will be concerned about me and about you. And the servant said, no, 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 let's not give up now. There is a man of God. He's a seer. Let's go to him. If we get to him, he will tell us where the lost asses are and he will tell us how to get there. He is a man of God. And Saul said, we can't go to him because at that time, before you go to see a seer, you must go with something. And he said, we don't have anything. The bread we took from home, we finished it. We don't have money. We don't have anything. We can't go to this man's house. It's just like wanting to go and buy something and you don't have money. What do we give him? He said, don't worry. I have it figured out. I have some money with me. I have this with me. Let's go. And the servant was an encourager, was a great associate that did not allow Saul to give up. So he knew the way to Samuel, and he took, took him to Samuel the prophet. When he got there, not knowing that God had already spoken to Samuel, that one guy is coming, his name is Saul, he's going to be the king, the next king of Israel. So as soon as he comes, anoint him with oil, proclaim him as the king. If the servant of Saul was not there to encourage him, to show him the way to the seer, to show him, to the, to show him the way to the person that would tell him his future, and that would push him into his future, that would have been the end. He got to Samuel. And Saul was anointed the king, and the rest is history. The lost asses were found, and he became the king of Israel. May God give you associates that will help you to move forward, to accelerate in life. You need such people. You need such people. And you need to pray that God should bring them and lead you to them or lead them to you. Just like Saul was led to this servant. May God lead you to such people or lead them to you in Jesus' name. The negative is, 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 is another interesting story. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 22, you can go and read it. Ahab and Jehoshaphat are friends. Ahab is the king of Israel, but he's a very wicked king. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah, very great king. So the king of Syria came to fight against Ahab. He wanted to destroy Ahab and destroy the whole place. So when Ahab and Jehoshaphat met, I think Jehoshaphat went to greet Ahab. Ahab said, ah, Jehoshaphat, my friend, I'm going to war. I'm going to fight against the king of Syria. Will you go with me? He said, of course I will go with you. We are together. My chariots, 
my horses, my equipment of war, they are yours, so let's go, I'll go with you. That's another associate, that's a friend. So I'll go with you. But Ahab was a wicked friend. He had a wrong motive for asking Jehoshaphat to go with him. So Ahab told Jehoshaphat, he said, Look, as we are going to this war, you know what? I will dress in, dress in mufti, I will disguise. You dress in the kingly robe while we go to war. And Jehoshaphat very innocently, with a pure heart, said, that's fine. So he dressed in his kingly robe and Joseph and Ahab disguised. So of course, when they got to war, the king of Israel in Syria had told his, his, his military men, he said, look, don't kill anybody, don't look for anybody, just keep looking for the king. When you see the king, gun him down. That's what I'm interested in in this battle. Of course, when you gun down the king, all of that will surrender. So they went to war with all their chariots, looking for the king. And of course, the only way they can recognize the king is to see somebody in the kingly robe. And immediately they saw somebody in the kingly robe, they said, that is the king. They wanted to burn him down. Jehoshaphat quickly shouted, and they said, ah, I am not the king, oh, I am not the king, I am not the king. Oh, they said, oh. So I guess they looked close to him. Somebody that recognizes him now said, oh, okay, so this is not Ahab, the king of Israel. So one of them now spotted Ahab, shot him, and Ahab knew immediately that he was shot. He told the driver of his chariot, he said, take me out of here because I'm wounded. Eventually Ahab died. Now, Ahab knew that if he went to war in his kingly robe, he would have died. He pushed Jehoshaphat, a friend, into the middle of the battle to die. You don't need such associates. And you need to pray that God will reveal them to you. Let me tell you, you will not know them. There are some friends that are enemies. I'm telling you, they are enemies in disguise, but you wouldn't know. They could be family members, they could be colleagues at work, they could be colleagues you know, in your business place. It takes only the Holy Spirit to reveal them to you. Jehoshaphat did not know what they have had in mind, but he followed him believe. Thank God that because he had an innocent heart, God delivered him. You don't need such associates in your life. You are going to ask the Lord to take them away from you completely or reveal them to you because like I said, you will not know them. It takes the Holy Spirit to reveal them to you. Sometimes it could be somebody that is so close and so loving, not knowing that uh, that love get us to be. It has something behind. So today, uh, we are praying that the Lord will lead us to great associates that will help us to accelerate or lead them to us. And we are saying, Lord, we reject negative associates. We reject friends that are enemies. We reject people that will push us into, into, into death, into destruction because they have ulterior motive against our lives. Shall we pray? Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, Thank you, Lord, for being with us since the beginning of this month of February. We've been looking at all these kind of people we need and the ones we don't need. Lord, I pray for everyone listening and watching Beautiful Ashes today, that in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, great associates, friends, colleagues, servants even, that will help us to accelerate, you will release them to our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we reject negative friends. We reject friends that are enemies. In the name of Jesus, I will ask for the spirit of discernment to know who to work with, to know who to tag along with, to know who to allow into our lives and into our day-to-day -day activities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every single woman today. Most single men are so gullible. When a man comes, they say, oh, you know, I love you, I love you, and just fall into the wrong hands. I pray for every single woman, every widow in this, on this platform today that you will not fall into wrong hands. God will open your eyes to see that man that is telling you, I love you, I doesn't really love you. His kiss is like the kiss of Judas to betray you. You will not fall into such hands. The Lord will give you the grace to be able to stand, take care of your children, take care of your life, until it brings to you somebody that will help you like the servant of Saul in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God has answered that prayer. And as we enter into the month of March, we are going to have testimonies in Jesus' name. I love you and I want you to know that God loves you most and He will grant unto you who has desires. Email me, subscribe to this channel, share it, put your comments and I'll be glad. God bless you.